Hi, unbelievably, this is my third attempt filming the repair of this t-shirt. I've had so many technical difficulties over the last week. So I'm really hoping that if you're watching this, that means it's all gone well. It does mean that I've already done quite a few of the repairs that this t-shirt needed. Luckily, this t-shirt is full of holes and there is still something for me to repair and show you how I do it. I've actually had a few requests about repairing really thin, worn out t-shirts and this is one of my favourites. And if you look there as I hold it up to the light, you can see how worn thin it is. But it's just one of those t-shirts that's so comfortable and it's great during the summer. And it's this summer that lots of the new holes have sprung up. So these light green square patches, I repaired the holes here. I think about two years ago now and they've held up really well this one here had actually developed two more holes i haven't woven in the ends yet but you can see the holes that developed around the original darn so that was quite a fun one to build up over the top of original darns and something that you can definitely do so don't ever feel that you can't repair over repairs because I think actually it has a really nice finish to it and another thing I've done with this set of repairs is to change my thread colour so all of the first round of repairs a couple of years ago were this light green colour which I actually don't have anymore so for this round I've switched to this darker green and I've also switched the shape of the dance that I'm doing so someone has requested a video of how to do these circular darns. And even though they're all slightly wonky, I think it's nice to have the contrast between the different patches. And it really makes it feel like a more tactile item of clothing, I think. And I talk a lot about wearing your repaired clothes as if they're a scrapbook, because you live your lives in them and the repairs tell a story and I think having these layered repairs and the different coloured repairs really helps to sort of show that scrapbook story in a nice visual way. A few remaining holes, I've got two just here on the other side seam and those are the ones that we're going to be repairing today. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a darning disc and place it underneath the t-shirt and I think I'm going to start with this hole here and you can see as soon as I put that elastic around the darning disc how thin this t-shirt is you can basically see the the darning disc all the way through so with your darning discs and elastics if you're using them. Just make sure that the fabric feels that it's being held in place, but that it's not distorting or stretching the hole out of shape even more. So you can see there that my fabric is not moving and that's gonna help as I come to sew, but the hole isn't being stretched. If I do that, you can see how much I could be pulling it and we don't want to do that. So that's my first step done. The next one will be to get my thread ready. So this is just a 100% cotton embroidery thread and I tend to cut my thread about the length of my arm. It's normally long enough for a smallish time like this and means that I don't have to weave in any more ends than necessary. And then for the weight of this t-shirt I'm going to split the thread down to four strands. I could probably go down to three, but I quite like having a slight embroidery feel to these patches. So slightly thicker than the, than the fabric of the t-shirt. The needle that I'm gonna be using today, it's a ball tip needle. And hopefully you can see that it has a tiny ball on the tip where the point would be on a normal needle. And these needles are really great for fabrics that are very delicate like this one is now because that ball is going to make sure that you're not piercing the fabric anymore and causing further damage. So I really like using these for 
knitwear, any fine knits where you don't want to snag the fabric. And yeah, anything like this where you're worried about the fabric being further damaged. So that's my needle and thread ready. The last thing you can do, depending on how comfortable you feel with your darning, is to draw a shape on before you start sewing. You don't have to do this, but especially with shaped darns or anything where you want it to have a certain finish, it can be helpful. So I'm just gonna mark that out. And as you can see, I'm making sure that the markings are about a centimetre away from the hole itself, which means I'm not gonna be stitching into any of the damaged fabric. One thing to say about this needle, as much as I've just recommended it, is that you will find that because it's not piercing the fabric in the same way, it will cause the fabric to move around a lot. So just, you'll see me doing it as I work each row, that I'm gonna be moving the fabric like this and just making sure that everything sits really nicely. So to start, I'm going to bring my needle in from the side of my darning mushroom and then leave a tail thread, which I'll weave in at the end. And then I've actually brought my needle up in the centre of the circle. So that's one thing I would always recommend with shaped arms where you've got something with symmetry. I find it much easier to fill in one side of these warp threads and then go back across and fill in the other side. And I'll also be doing that for the weft threads as well. I just personally find it easier than starting from the side and working across. So I'm working around the chalk marking that I've got, being really careful not to pull on the fabric too much or to distort the threads as I build them up. And as you can see, with every warp row that I make, they're getting shorter. So I think I'll just have this one final row here. And then what I'm gonna do is push my needle down here and then jump up over here and then I'm going to start filling in the other half of the circle like this. So I'll go down in here and then up into position there. And now you can do exactly the same thing, but filling in the other side of the circle. So now again I've got my one warp thread and then I'll bring it back out at the side and I always do that even though I'm going to be using the same colour. I always like to start in a new piece of thread just so that I can keep everything nice and separate and not end up in a tangled mess. Okay, so now I'm ready to start weaving in the weft threads. And as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be doing the same thing where I start in the centre, work down, and then go back and fill the upper half of the circle. Even though I've got the ball tip needle that I'm using, now that I'm coming to weaving, I'm still going to turn my needle around and weave over and under all of my warp threads using the eye of the needle. It's largely that it's just habit for me to do that now, but I do still find even with the ball tip needle, it's easier to just turn it around and not risk any fabric snagging as you're working. Then on the other side here, I'll secure this weft thread down. And then 
my needle and thread are ready to go back in the opposite direction. So here I'm just going to be alternating the order that I went over and under. And then before I pull through, I always use my needle just to check that I've gone over and under all of the right threads, but I also use it to just push the threads closer together. And now I can just carry on in the same way. And again, as with the warp threads, for every weft row that I fill in, they will be getting shorter as I move up to the circle. And then another tip for working with circles is that you can use the gap between all of these warp threads as your marker to follow the shape. So here, I'm going to push my needle down and then bring it up in the middle of those two warp threads there and that hopefully will give me a fairly smooth circle shape. You'll also notice as I said I'm constantly checking the tension of the surrounding fabric and making sure that nothing's being pulled too taut. So I think I can do one more row of weaving there before I then jump back down to fill in the other half of the circle. So here you'll see that I've just got a couple of warp threads to weave over and under. And then push my thread down and then up into position. ready to go back and fill in the rest of the circle. And here's a really good time to use that needle, push up and straighten up all of those previous rows so far. I'm sure that there will be some comments about this t-shirt and about how it is possibly too far gone to be spending this much time darning it and part of me agrees patching would be a very quick option but I just really liked the idea of adding to the existing darns and story and I think it's probably a very familiar feeling for a lot of people having pieces in your wardrobe that aren't necessarily expensive or you know heirloom status but that are just so comfortable and that you reach to again and again and that's the reason they've worn out in this way because they have been loved and worn repeatedly and I think for me anyway with this t-shirt that's enough of a reason to want to keep fixing it and that's the repair done. And then there's the hole that it's covered. There are lots of ways that you can weave in the ends on the reverse of your clothing once you've finished your darn. If it's a nice chunky knit, I would normally weave in and out of some of the existing fabric. But because this t-shirt is so thin and such a fine knit, 
I'm just going to weave in and out of this fabric here. So I won't be going through the darn on the front. I'll just be going through these tiny bits of fabric here and then I'll weave a few times and then just trim the end. You could also go through these stitches here, but I don't want to risk causing any more tension to the fabric. So all I'm gonna do is push my thread through one way, down the other way, being careful not to touch the darn and then pull through the centre of the hole there and then I can just trim that off and that's buried it you can't see it from the front and then there are no uncomfortable knots either finished from the inside and from the outside. It's quite a nice patchwork of repairs now. Just got that one down to finish and that's it. I hope this has been a helpful video to watch. I think with thin fabrics like this it really is just about taking it slowly and making sure you adjust the tension as you go, not pulling too hard with your needle and thread. And the circles I think are a really fun way to darn and I think they can just be really effective even though this is just a single colour. I think it works really well especially against the black of the t-shirt. Thanks for watching and also just a quick shout out to my patrons. I'm from Patreon, you guys are amazing and your support really means a lot and it means that I get to spend time making videos like this for you and I love being able to answer any questions or requests like this so if you have any other techniques that you'd like me to share in a video let me know and hopefully I'll be back soon.